in the cacophony of digital discourse, Hasnabi, the digital savant of our times, unfurls his frustration like an avant-garde tapestry, critiquing streamers' wash and destiny along with the broader left-wing online community. Right? A V leftist friend of mine always says that you do give some misinformation. I don't know where she gets that from. I know where she gets that from. She gets that from Vosh. That's it. And Vosh is Asian's communities. That's where did she get it from. Kills Vosh. All these motherfuckers that want to be Destiny. That's where they get it from. They're, that's what they're doing. You literally just said where they get it from. Anyway, look at how, Mar how hot Martha Stewart is. Which is totally irrelevant to the point. Yeah, I did read it. That's what it is. It's pure opportunism. There's no real, like, we need to clean house attitude. They do it because it's a way to cut off and distinguish themselves from other content creators and to make themselves more appeasing, more pleasing to, like, a, a broader right-wing or liberal community. That's it. Everyone is trying to brand build. That's why so many of these people... And their audiences criticize me and say, oh, Hassan is so beholden to his mods. Hassan is so beholden to the tankies in his community. That's why he has to constantly say, like, tanky sh Not realizing that, like, I could have a more nuanced perspective on American foreign policy due to where I grew up, potentially. You know what I mean? And it, it, But they can't imagine that. Because in their world, it's like, they only assume a lot of positions. And this is not just about Bosch, because he, at least he's like... At least he's always been pro-Palestine from the jump. And I do respect that. But like, beyond that, a lot of the content creators in the leftist debate sphere unironically just tailor their positions to whatever masses their audience. It's very frustrating. That's it. The people you grab from those target communities will then side with uh, with you. It's leeching. What? It's so weird. Just ask yourself. Who is in power in this country? Who is in power globally? Is it right-wing fascists? Like Maloney. I'm in Italy right now. Or is it ultra tankies? You know what I mean? Marxist, Leninist, ultras that are like shining past supporters. Okay. Who is it? Who actually has real power? So if it's the right-wing psychopaths and the right-wing fascists and the white supremacists, then why the f*** do you spend 90% of your commentary on other random, completely powerless, completely irrelevant, myself included, by the way, don't ever listen to anyone that says, I am a genuinely powerful political figure. They are drama farming. They say it because they want to justify and moralize the criticism they're just trying to file farm. I saw Ben Shapiro all the goddamn time. Ben Shapiro sits on top of a f media throne worth millions of dollars. Okay? So anyone that tells you, well, I'm on Hassan because, like, I have disagreements with him because he's an incredibly filler media figure on the left is f lying to you. I am not anywhere near as relevant as Ben Shapiro. Don't say I'm dodging responsibility. Suck my dick. Do you? No, hold on. No, unban that person. I want to ask him a serious question. Do you think my output on the world is anywhere near as negative as a Ben Shapiro? Because if you say yes, then you might either A, be a Ben Shapiro fan, or B, absolutely baboon brain dumbass with no discernible politics whatsoever. Okay? That's the point. People say this all the time. When they're like, uh, you're just dodging responsibility. That's a really weird thing to say because it's very, I'm very serious about this, okay? Do you think my overall output is a net negative in the same way that Ben Shapiro's is? And, and then explain to me why you think that, one, I have as much impact on political culture as Ben Shapiro, who also is relatively irrelevant, okay? And that impact is negative. There's two things you need to prove here. One, my overall impact is negative on society because like my ideology is offensive to you or the things I do is offensive to you. And two, you have to also then prove to me, 
okay, that that I am anywhere near as impactful as Ben Shapiro as far as overall clout, overall influence. Ben Shapiro interviews Ted Cruz on a daily basis. Like, these guys have real access. No, but you can't say that you don't have any influence. You're moving the goalposts. I did not say I don't have any influence. I said I am irrelevant in the grand scheme of things, especially in comparison to the likes of Ben Shapiro, my right-wing counterpart. So why did you move the goalpost to, no, you can't say you don't have any influence? Because you don't have any real discernible political opinions. You're just in here to debate. And this wraps up the exact point that I was trying to make. That a lot of these guys don't care about politics. They simply want to debate. Okay? They simply want to debate. They do not have real politics. I've seen this. This is what I grew up on. This is where... In my, more, in my formative years, this is what I saw online all the time. These are the message board guys who don't really have any politics and no friends, really. But they do actu actually share a sense of community from being on the message boards. And they're just in here simply to debate. They might personally not even recognize that. They might personally think that they do actually uh, have a discernible political opinion. And they try to moralize their position like the Redditors that they are. Redditors don't simply go, I'm cyber-stalking my favorite e-celeb e-girl. I'm actually doing it because she needs to be held accountable. Okay? There's always a sense of moralizing your actions online. It's not just your consumption. Right? Why don't you engage and collaborate uh, actively with other lefties? Everyone has their own ecosystem and hates each other. It sucks. I do. I do it all the time. You just don't care because it's not a debate lord online content creator that you like watching. What the f*** are you talking about? I have journalists, activists, politicians on this f stream all the goddamn time. You don't care about that because you're an unserious moron. You only care about your favorite manifesto writing content creator. That's it. That's literally it. Yeah, exactly. You mean streamers because you're a fum ass. Streamers are relevant, just like myself. There you go. You proved it yourself. The tableau he paints, reminiscent of a day-dazed masterpiece, captures the disillusionment with left-wing content creators accused of peddling misinformation and engaging in a Machiavellian dance of opportunism and brand building. In this surreal landscape, Hasnabi, like a philosophical alchemist, transmutes criticisms directed at him into a narrative elixir. He defends the orbit of his perspectives around the gravitational force of his background and experiences, challenging the presupposition that content creators must adhere to a predetermined ideological trajectory. The air is thick with the scent of extreme avant-garde proverbs, where the assumption of ideological straitjackets becomes the poison apple of intellectual stagnation. The canvas of Hasnabi's discourse extends to the critique of why left-wing streamers engage in internecine battles rather than confronting the Goliaths of right-wing ideology. In this allegorical battlefield, Hasnabi, armed with rhetorical arrows, dismisses claims of his own political omnipotence, positioning himself as a mere minstrel in comparison to the Ben Shapiro titans of the digital Colosseum. The dialectical dance continues as Hasnabi, with the cadence of a modern-day Diogenes, challenges critics to prove that his impact is as deleterious as Shapiro's. It is a Socratic gambit where the poison chalice of influence is passed between the accuser and the accused, invoking the spirit of ancient philosophical duels. This digital pantheon, despite its collective pursuit of progressive ideals, is marked by schisms and ideological fault lines, echoing the historical struggles of leftist movements. One prominent reason for the proliferation of sectarianism is the inherent diversity of leftist ideologies. 
The left, much like an ideological archipelago, encompasses a spectrum ranging from social democrats to anarchists, from democratic socialists to Marxist-Leninists. This ideological polyphony, while enriching the leftist discourse, also becomes a breeding ground for internal tensions and factionalism. Historical echoes reverberate through the corridors of the online left, where past ideological conflicts find digital reincarnation. The ghosts of leftist movements, from the historical battles between Trotskyists and Stalinists to the ideological skirmishes within anarchist factions, cast shadows that linger in the digital realm. The weight of historical grievances becomes a perennial backdrop to contemporary disagreements. The digital landscape, with its anonymity and detachment, fosters an environment where ideological debates escalate into full-blown schisms. The absence of face-to-face -face interactions, characteristic of the online left, diminishes the humanizing element, transforming ideological opponents into abstract adversaries. In this virtual realm, nuance is often sacrificed at the altar of absolutism, contributing to the fracturing of the left into insular echo chambers. Moreover, the rise of content creators as ideological figureheads intensifies the sectarian landscape. Online platforms, like fiefdoms of ideological influence, witness content creators amassing devoted followings. These digital demagogues, while disseminating ideas, inadvertently become standard bearers of specific ideologies, magnifying the impact of ideological rifts within the online left. Economic precarity, akin to a vulture circling the ideals of solidarity, also plays a role in fueling sectarianism. The scramble for limited resources and attention in the digital sphere prompts ideological factions to vie for prominence. The quest for online influence becomes a zero-sum game, exacerbating tensions and fostering an environment where ideological adversaries are perceived as threats to individual prominence. The lack of a cohesive and centralized organizing structure within the online left contributes to fragmentation. Unlike traditional political parties or movements, the online left lacks a unifying center that could mediate disputes and forge a common path. The absence of a unifying force allows ideological factions to proliferate independently, leading to a fragmented landscape. The rhetorical crescendo reaches its zenith as Hasnabi, the digital Cassandra, questions the authenticity of online debaters accusing them of reveling in the amphitheater of debate without a genuine political compass. It is a metatextual commentary on the performative nature of digital engagement, where the arena itself becomes the deity to be appeased. The avant-garde odyssey of Hasnabi extends to the realm of collaboration and unity among left-wing content creators, a realm where the lack of cohesion becomes a surreal critique of the political landscape. Hasnabi, donned in the robes of a political philosopher, lambasts those who genuflect only to their favorite streamers, oblivious to the broader symphony of left-wing voices. The elixir to mend ideological schisms requires a careful concoction of strategies that address the root causes and foster a culture of unity, collaboration, and constructive engagement. One potent remedy lies in the cultivation of a shared sense of purpose and overarching goals within the online left. Establishing a common ground that transcends specific ideological differences can create a unifying force akin to the gravitational pull that binds celestial bodies. This shared purpose could revolve around key issues such as social justice, environmental sustainability, or economic equality serving as a unifying North Star amid the ideological constellations. Educational initiatives, reminiscent of the ancient philosophical academies, could act as a balm for sectarianism. Promoting a nuanced understanding of diverse leftist ideologies, their historical contexts, and shared values can bridge gaps in comprehension. 
By fostering intellectual empathy, education becomes a catalyst for breaking down echo chamber walls and promoting a more informed and understanding discourse. The establishment of digital spaces dedicated to constructive dialogue becomes a sanctuary for fostering unity. Creating platforms that encourage respectful debate, dialogue, and collaboration across ideological lines can provide a refuge from the toxic currents of sectarianism. These spaces should prioritize active listening, mutual respect, and the recognition of shared goals, fostering an environment where disagreements are viewed as opportunities for growth rather than as battlegrounds. The cultivation of charismatic leaders with a unifying vision can act as a healing salve for the online left. Leaders who transcend specific ideological factions and focus on the broader objectives of the movement can become beacons of unity. These leaders should prioritize coalition building, emphasizing the strength that emerges from diversity rather than succumbing to the divisive forces of sectarianism. In the realm of digital engagement, moderation becomes a vital remedy. Establishing robust moderation policies that curb toxicity, ad hominem attacks, and dogmatic fervor can create a healthier online ecosystem. Moderators, akin to wise arbiters in the agora, should enforce rules that prioritize constructive discourse, fostering an environment where ideas can clash without devolving into ideological trench warfare. Collaborative projects, reminiscent of ancient alliances, can serve as a potent antidote to sectarianism. Initiatives that bring together representatives from diverse leftist factions for common goals, be it activism, community projects, or policy advocacy, can break down the walls of ideological isolation. Collaborations showcase the strength that emerges from unity, encouraging a more cooperative spirit.